right, what are we? We're on hour 36. All right. So we're doing the marathon, right? We're doing a telethon, a marathon. It's going against the Bodenars, yeah. This Criden here, this Criden decided to, you know, say, fuck the WTF experiment. Well, and it's protocol, right? The shh, don't talk about it. So I started talking, and it seems like everyone who has to do with the project, especially my family now, I'm realizing, are, are misunderstanding this private and public thing that this First Amendment auditor, the only one, dudes, in Santa Barbara, and now I'm realizing Lompoc, Santa Maria, maybe Ventura, no, Ventura, I know, I have some friends. That's where Ventura there is, Audit the Auditor. You guys should join this person's channel. They love going against us and anything we say, but they appreciate that we are mostly right, and they point out things that we really appreciate when they point out we're wrong, you see? But we don't like to be pointed out that we're wrong when we're not. So I wanna start out with a text. I realized that there's somebody in the family of the WTF experiment that um, is kind of speaking without speaking, if you know what I mean, and then getting mad. All right, this is a certain sister who has maybe, hmm, who has maybe text a message before listening to the to the letter that someone that you already have in your possession, right? Now, each time, let's say one of your brothers just said, listen to this, and you said, yes, but, and you made some, you made some rules and the brother went, all right, sure, whatever, but listen to it first and then make those rules. Instead, it's weeks go by, the brother's getting anxious. He, he doesn't know how to make a certain direction, a certain decision. It, it's about something that this sister knows about, like, like the value of an instrument or the actual people who sold the instrument to perhaps a student be it a brother or a sister or a them or a they, you know? So nobody in my gender studies class, that's for you, Mikey. We miss you, Mikey. Yeah, I started a gender studies class for the Music and Arts Conservatory of Santa Barbara, MAC. Yeah, you can say I didn't teach there. You can tell them I wasn't an educator or I did not play at any of the performances. You can try to do that. That's just forgetting. That's all the things you want to forget, like... You forgot the benign cyst under my ear, huge, like a golf ball at, at Fess Parker. And I had to go around with my bipolar, not wanting to see anyone really. But you guys would always just make me play those rules. You gotta, we gotta play the thing. It's gonna be for the parents. It's very important that you dress up. Could you please put on some um, cologne, oh, all those things. Here, take my deodorant. I have to point out, uh, sister, you buy that stuff. They fooled you, right, on TV. It says it's for women only. What are you doing now? It's years later. Do you know how much zinc is in that thing? I mean, come on. I could, I, but I got cut off, you know. Some nurses came over from our establishment, and they looked and went, ugh. That's freaky, like I would freak out. And then they told me horror stories about what they had seen in, uh, in, in hospitals or in, in war movies or whatever. Maybe it was a DUI checkpoint that they got stuck at and then they were thrown into some, the wrong class. This stuff happens, it happened to me. I got thrown into a mad um, organization for my DUI, right? Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, right? And I have a friend Dave Hartman, sister, you might have known him. He was a trombone player in Santa Barbara, maybe. Where did we rehearse? San Marcos High School. Yeah. Youth theater. Eric Stoltz was in youth theater. Katie Hoffman was in youth theater. Linus Hoffman was in youth theater. Linus Hoffman, how are you doing? I miss you. 
I thought I saw you once in a in a tea leaf by Petrini's. Um, they're closed now. Yeah, that was the only last place. If that was you, and you're a nomad like me, Linus, I want to thank you. Back in the 80s, you forced me to listen to Queen. I was telling you, I do not like this. And, you know, over the years, I realized how great it was. To the point when, when I was in France in this band, and I was trying to tell them not to do this headbanging thing that everyone was doing. They, I mean, it looks cool for a while, but I wasn't going to do it. And I, it, they forced me afterwards. I would have been more expressive, like in Iggy Pop, dancing around and stuff. But instead, they forced me just to make them stop moving on stage. I, if, headbanging, if you guys don't know what it is, it's just they're, they're doing extreme head movements, neck things. They all paid for it. Y'all did. You know it. Yeah. Everyone paid through the ears. Yeah, you should have listened to me, people. I was suffering like you. I was just asking you to turn it down or put, give me something, some good earplugs that really work. That's bringing me to the ANSD. I'm sorry this comes off as yelling. That's why my sister couldn't listen to it and my mother's. They can't listen to it because it's, it's too long. It rambles on. It's a lot of babbling. If I bring up Tipper Gore and saying, yeah, she was nice when she was young and she was taking pictures with a Leica that I wish I had that Leica, and right now I see her again, that exact picture after having my Leica broken by a police officer, right? Like I'm Johnny Five O being taken down in the Santa Barbara library by some library cop by the name of Hove, Officer Hove, who threw this person from public to private and back again. That's bringing us back to the private. So someone in the family said, many, actually, at several different times said, oh, wait a minute, I thought this was a private conversation. I thought I was talking to my son, not the organization of the WTF. I th thought it was illegal that you are actually recording everything and playing it back to this doctor that you're saying is from the Green Party. Uh, so that means we're just going to be writing things, texting you things that are um, have all these other doctors from different programs behind this. And I'm going to be going, well, you're going against the Native American Indians. So especially living here in Santa Barbara, I got a lot of leeway. I got a lot of leverage. And they like when I'm talking about these padres, when I'm talking about personal issues with some priests at this uh, mission where two and a half men has stock footage. So they paid for something. They paid in to this mission of Santa Barbara. But back in my days, I'm going to be talking about the 80s, um, where I'm old enough to be a choir boy, but I just played cello, and I would play at a lot of the functions, you know, religious functions that happen at this mission, and fiesta. We got a big fiesta month, a lot of stuff. A lot of times there would be a padre. These padres are priests. They work through the mission. They always at that particular time, wore a certain robe. And sometimes they would say, come in the back, would you mind playing? I'll, we'll have, I'll serve you something to drink. You will have some crackers. Are you getting me here? So I didn't have to be a choir boy, but I had a friend who was one and had a beautiful voice. And people always say that um, Sting, see, I can say that, it's not his real name. Um, Sting sang like a choir boy, right? I think he said he was in the choir. I know that um, the Kinks, right, Ray Davies, I'm sure he was. I'm just saying that I might have had some incidences where this particular padre, like one padre at the mission, um, baptized me. And there are pictures to document. That's why I know I'm the First Amendment auditor. My mama was taking the pictures of me coming back from behind this uh, what was it? They had you behind when they were doing baptisms. Okay, for those of you, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal from Kevin Hart. This is a true story. Okay, okay. So don't make me laugh. All right. I, I'm saying don't make me laugh. I'm saying this is a true story. I'm looking at you. I'm smiling. I'm getting the audience, but in fact, I'm looking and I'm searching in my improv. What the hell do I do? What's the story? <sighs> my baptism. 
Baptism. All right, bringing me back to my baptism. You're going to say you're not going to remember that. No, but I saw the pictures. That's why it's very important, people, to photograph all these type of perhaps you might be catching a predator. Let's hope not, but always photograph in public if the preacher or your hairdresser or your bank clerk or your CVS pharmacist or the manager or you're just out in the parking lot going, I think that person scratched my car. I'm going to photograph their license plate and just prove that I, my feet were standing here in public ground. Yeah. No, don't you want to look at that guy at the, you know, this, this is a true story. We'll get back to my baptism. Don't worry. I don't want to go into that dark thing. All I know is that I prevailed. In these pictures, whatever that pastor was trying to do to me during the baptism, I'm telling you, I never got baptized. Not by that guy. I did not keep that cross. They did give me a cross I was supposed to wear around my neck. But in those pictures, all I see is a, there's a mess in the back. Something's happening. He's supposed to dip me in some water. I do not want to do it the way he, whatever his touchy-feely method. Meanwhile, they're really well-dressed and being super polite, taking pictures, right, on the other side, right? I'm already entertaining to them. Yes. How old was I? Four years old. That's right. What happened at four years old? Why did they baptize me so late? Why did it have to be that I was standing in this water saying, there's no logical way, pastor, you're going to put me into this thing. It doesn't make sense. Can I please? Mama, can you get over here and take the pictures on the right side? You're just getting a, a I can't even say, what was it? It's a curtain. It was a curtain. That's the word. I'm finding trigger words for myself, for my own personal PTSD, and it's curtains, right? It's the word. It's going to be curtains for you. I would see that in those cartoons. Bugs Bunny would say it a lot. And a lot of times these nomads that I meet now, um, when they look at you, it's different. You don't have to give them a big story. Kind of like when um, Adam Yao from the Beastie Boys um, talked about meeting the Dalai Lama. Not the one that we met here. Not the 14th, but the 13th. But upon meeting him, right, he had, he, he had had all these mishaps, this, like trying to get to the Dalai Lama, to the, what this situation was, which was like a meet and greet with all these people waiting in line. And he had a certain time he had to be there. And, and being like myself, he was just like, I know I'm a mess up. Everyone says I'm a flake. I try really hard. When I don't try, I seem to be early to things. And people say, why are you so early? Um, you know, you never win on these things. You wear, I'm going to wear the tie. Suddenly you get there, they go, why are you being so uptight? Take the tie off. You know, and it's like the only time you wore it. And they've been asking you for years. Just wear the Dockers. Can't you do the thing like on the commercials? You show up with the Dockers and go, I got arrested. Yeah. I got to tell you, because of the Dockers, right? Yeah, where's my belt? You tell me I just need a belt to hold it up. No, don't you see that those are my... It's, I'm holding them up with my shoelaces because I'm, I'm, I'm so, like, weak. I haven't been eating. Why haven't you been eating? You should have told us that last week. Well, no, this just happened three days ago. They kept me in this jail. Oh, my God. The Istanbul jail? Well, no, come on sisters mama um no the one here right by my house by your house you should clean that place do you know it's a fire hazard though Edsick says that we're gonna if a if a if a what was a true story a true story people um my brother-in-law after seeing my place which looks like it's a very well-crafted hoarders establishment i it, it was a crime scene i set it up six years ago for these cops to come in with no body cams and to totally do their best at, at abusing me while looking at what is there. It's not going to start a fire. The fire department can come in and notify, oh, you got good key grips. And I said, yeah, we're making a movie and we're going to end it with a time lapse of me cleaning it all up. So don't worry about that part. But when I'm doing that time lapse where it's cleaning it all up, 
the upstairs neighbors will have put the floors back just the way they were. You're going to see it's, it's going to be better. It, it, you're still going to hear stuff. But I can sell it like that. I can tell the person, yeah, if you put soundproofing in, it's going to be a beautiful place. And you'll have to put special lighting in because it's super dark, because it's like a basement thing. Yeah. And, and if I put in the right appliances, that's all I have to do. They'll do it. They'll be like, ah, it's not that bad. They're going to tell me, oh, it's not that bad. But when I was trying to explain it to the upstairs neighbor when she had set off the PSD, and they just would not even put a carpet. I asked, can you put a runner just for when your kid's running back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in this hallway? I, I can't take it away from him. You can't ask him not to do it because my daughter, um, she, she grew up here and I know she loves that hallway. I have movies of her running back and forth, but we're on the bottom floor and I have good wood flooring. It was done by a professional where yours as the guy from the HOA standing next to me said to them, yeah, the only way that it would be out of code, this code, Nina, that you told me I needed to pass, no, they violated the code. And they violated it first. That's another thing. Like you violated the code first, this private public thing, just in conversation of the First Amendment, by, by saying... Itzik, by lying, by just saying that Itzik says he can only help you if you clean it up because it's violation of a fire code. And I said, I own the four walls. They would have to come in this fire department code to do it. If they broke in to do it, it would be illegal. Either way to kick me out over a fire violation. No, they would give me a fine first. I mean, it's just all this stuff that I know, and you have doctors and lawyers behind you, too. At least that's what you said right afterwards. Like, to every time you've said something, instead of apologizing for lying, you would go, yes, but, and say something else. And, and who does that? Well, Mama does that. And so I said, well, it's going to stop with her. So I communicate through her, and it, this channel was so much more fun when you guys didn't, weren't linked in. I mean, you, you just annihilated, oh, I'm sorry, Lauren Gazette. Not, not just for a little while here, it's just where my mind's gonna be. And, and Mary Mandolin, I'm sorry I yelled at you. It, blame it on them, blame it on them. That's, I'm trying to lose all that negativity but now you guys, you call me. And just because I answered the phone, oh God, everything changed. And then it was a barrage of texts and, and having to deal with mama where she's just like, she's hysterical now. It doesn't make any sense. And you guys could have translated these audios to her. But if you take it like it's yelling, no, it's just you never heard me speak. I was always very quiet and you guys would just cut me off. So I go from my childhood where I'm mute and I have to deal with all your guys' bullshit and it's all memories in my head and you all went and that's the three of you. You took care of me, you brought me up. So all three of you are my sisters, my parents. But I'm, I'm finding out the real, I got another tribe out there and I'm gonna start with Criden. I'm starting really small. And, but I'm seeing that there's people have that kind of bloodline. They might be, they're anything. I don't, I don't care what it looks like on paper. All I know is they just, whatever name they wanna give me, that I, they know, whatever name they gave to the human effort, whatever name they gave to the Green Party, they got a t-shirt from us, it says, don't be a dick. And they walk around and they make sure other people aren't dicks. It's that easy. They can be anything. You can do anything, but you know, there's the major, you'll find out, killing someone, that's kind of a dick move. So you gotta give the shirt back and you never get allowed back in, you see? And you guys are doing this kind of dick move in this First Amendment 
area with me saying, I don't think you should be talking about this. Can you censor it? And I'm going, whoa, freedom of press. That'll be different. If I do it for the press, I'm going to get all serious and like really factual. And you guys, it's, it's going to be terrible. Talk about triggers for you. So you have to work the other way around. You have to, if you can't listen to one of my things one time through, do what I say on the thing. Put the treble all the way up, but turn the volume down. Don't listen to it on your phone. Listen to it on, oh my God, if you have to. No, not even the, well, okay. If you have to on the computer, but through headphones. But I think you guys have the technology. If you have a decent up-to-date television, you can run YouTube through it. And Nina, in the description boxes that I keep telling you, in some of the way the older films that I was sending you through YouTube, sometimes the only thing it said on the screen was, Nina, please read the description box. Nina, please read the description box. And I'd say, did you see it? And you would say, I haven't had enough time to go all the way through it. You would explain, you know, for me, and then you explain how I should have done it. Kind of like the, um, how, how my whole, the first time I had the guts to send you what I was doing here was two years ago, right? You started the experiment. It started off with me having an argument with mama and, and, and it was something Bodnarish that was really triggering me because she was telling me she needed my doctor to tell her the triggers while I was yelling at her, you're triggering me now. I'm, I'm delivering for DoorDash. You, you cut in, it cuts off the notifications. I, I told her all this, it gets into the navigation. I told you that Nina, that it gets into my navigation and you wouldn't look. I tried to show you at the table at one of our reunions. You wanna say that triggers you? No, how can you say that what I'm saying is triggering you if I repeated it to you already once while it was happening? You, you called me while there was someone in the car. I was on, it was Lyft. And you know, you texted me, it's that thing. And you're like, where are you? And I'm driving in the car. The lady, God, it was so ironic. The lady was going to do this big speech. This lady in the car, just wonderful. Thank you. For, the saint about texting and driving. She lost her son to texting and driving. And she lost her son to a Lyft driver texting while driving her son somewhere. Now, you're just still in that thing, where are you? I think it started like that. I, you did get through by phone first. Yes, and I was apologizing to the lady in the back. I didn't know yet the, the story. She tells me afterwards, but I'm yelling at you. Stop doing this, I'm working. I explained to you that sometimes we, it, it goes over. I cannot be playing your rules. It's Lyft. Did you not understand the stories where I wound up in Compton and was calling Lyft security services 24 hours seven because I had done that thousands rides. They were supposed to be treating me special now. And it turned out all that was fake. So I had to, I couldn't even protect these, uh, passengers who have a special number and I'd have to tell them, oh, I'm sorry, even through that special number, they wouldn't save us. And, and it's Allstate. They made us do a thing with Allstate and Lyft. And it turns out in a major accident, neither, I mean, neither one of us would be covered. They wouldn't have our backs. And that's a major thing for me to point out to them to get me blacklisted, right? Now, I was about to do a showdown with this lift. I was really getting prepared, like I'm doing a showdown with Shell. It was an assault to them discontinuing me, dis, disaffecting, you know, saying that I was letting, they started pointing out that I was doing my gypsy thing, and it's true. 
where I would take I would take these little old ladies in Montecito. They'd rather give me a whole bunch of money to just take them down the block and sit in the parking lot and take them home than give it to you and have it like draining the battery of my phone and taking. It's like an 80-20 split. No, I'm sorry, 60-40. No, it's like an 80-20 split. It depended on the fare, on the ride. That's illegal. So they blacklisted me, but they blamed it that I have on my record now that I beat up a bunch of cops because of these upstairs neighbors having an issue with me. And, and somehow the cops came in illegally with this new welfare check. They're just checking on my welfare. It, it, it was just in the Constitution, I, I guess here, of Santa Barbara, California. Dudley, Attorney Dudley, District Attorney Dudley, your daughter, Ellen, it's her friend, Misha Bonar. I'm friends with Joe Woodard. He uh, worked at the Independent, but he played in the band, right, Dudley? And she did a thing, an album. It was on cassette at first, right? Handmade, um, recorded. Probably by, by, uh, okay, I, I won't give out that name until I find out. Um, but, you know, the public nudity, she made it look like a public enemy album cover, um, but it was a cop or cops, you know, went traveling way into the hills to catch this public nudity, which it was just the First Amendment. They were, they were doing press, they were doing expression. They, they were creatively protesting the spray paint that's out there now in all these wonderful spots. District Attorney Dudley, you know those cops were wrong and we could tell the whole story, which I will another time, it's hilarious. But why go through that now again when the COVID's not over? Everything I've done here on the channel it's documented, it's factual. Um, even the trolls who say, that's not true. They, you know, you're, you're a liar that they should have to tell their first names when you go into stores and things. If it's not, it has to be our government officials. You know, that's what people were telling me, that I should get off this, that we should all be professional thing. But okay. If that is true, you have to see that last video, right? When there's the Syrians and I'm like playing Wagner and I'm doing a protest right there at the liquor store next to the grocery outlet where I'd been recording them for two days and they're not taking out those carts. They're leaving them. Some of them are scratching cars. Nobody cares here because we're Santa Barbara. We're just doing their job for them. It's all filmed. And there's a friend of mine, Dave, He's just lying on the ground. He's like detoxing. And the cops come and go. And there's all these incidences, but they don't go into the place to actually get the, the three witness account of this, um, whatever they said it was to get those cops to come toward me. And I had to tell them, whoa, you don't surround a bipolar. And one of them went, yeah, I know, I know. And, and went around to start to bother the homeless guy on the ground who's been there for weeks, like, what are your men doing? And I had to shoo him away and say, hey, no, legally you're supposed to come toward me first, but don't go in my face and don't lie. Because I said, oh, do you have it? Do you, really, you know what it is. You've studied it. And he said no afterwards. So it means they're all doing that. They are walking around saying that they know about this mental illness. I was just lately in the place so I saw written on the wall that there's a couple suing action, a couple legal actions. I don't know if you're attached to it. I got bored through the middle. I just got attached on that one thing. They do not know how to take care of people with mental issues. And I saw it for the past six years. I have been in and out of that jail. One right there next to my house. I don't know, it's been, there's, yeah, there will be so many things written down, District Attorney Dudley, if you can find them. But right now, I think they just put it into this thing that just says incident, which could be just the failure to appear to the other things, because I never got, <laughs> I never got anything for any of my charges in the mail to say, come in, or where are you, pay a fine. So I know, and, and each time, 
I had to reapply all of my names. I gave them all of my alias. These are all legal things. They lost it all. And I've been in that system since I was 13, 13 years old. That means they lost all of that, which means you probably lost all my school records. So does that mean anything that was connected to Santa Barbara? So that means La Colina, everything I've been talking about, La Colina, junior high school, you guys in the system, in the county, do not have my records. Misha Bodnar, you don't have it. Misha Bodnar Horton, you might, right? You're going to have to go through all the names. You're going to find out. You don't, you lost everything. You, someone before you, someone before you. Oh, a computer. Yikes. Yeah. And then someone with the computer who didn't put some of my proof that I went to USC. Hello. At a super young age. Thanks. That's helpful. Proof that, you know, Gabor Rido was my teacher all that time. Proof that, oh, well, I can get. No, okay, there is proof that I went to the Manhattan School of Music. Okay, so you're saved. Anything that's not in my town. And there's proof that I went to the Paris Conservatory. So, no, yeah, anything that's not in my town. But now I'm 57. I'm back in this town. I learned all about Europe. I learned they're better than you. Santa Barbara County, I'm just saying. Where you overrid something, you let a cop take your overriding Dudley, district attorney. You said it was okay for them to trespass this guy for standing in a corner filming. That's insanity. And then they threw him to the ground. You hear someone saying, he's bleeding. You see in the video, he's walking away. He just says public nudity. That's all he said. He said public nudity in the front on the steps, but I guess that was still private and he knew this hove. He can't beat this man up on the private. The, the, there's recordings of the, you know, there were all these recordings of the librarian calling and saying, yeah, don't worry about it. I think he's a first amendment auditor. So you guys shouldn't even have to come over. It's like on recordings. And if it isn't, they can put it there. Are you understanding? District Attorney, you must tell all the policemen, especially the ones that didn't have numbers under their badges. And I'm still questioning the YouTube world. No one has gotten back to me on that one. So, yeah. Da, 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 captain's log. Let's get our pajamas fixed for our officers. No, let's get them body cams, please. District Attorney Dudley, if our policemen had body cams back in those days when Dudley was just making that picture or just enjoying the hot springs that didn't have the, the, the spray paint because I guess none of our county workers want to go out there. I'll do it. Give me the job. I'll go out all these places where there's, um, where there's this uh, spray paint and, and, and trash and I'll do it. But you got to give me a uniform. Let me have some mace. Let me be able to, you know, I'll, I'm not going to give a fine for them smoking a doobie. I'm not going to do that thousand dollar thing. So they have to go into court, maybe not afford to be able to pay it, do some jail time. No, if they weren't bothering anyone, I'm going to have the county give them an award. Yeah. Same thing. Thousand bucks, thousand bucks award. If you're caught on the Lord Crichton's cleaning route up in the, in, in the hot springs up there. I know exactly where to go. But I'll start out here where I live, 93105. I mean, where I used to live. I have to now hang out in the parking lots of Nolita, right? By the county facilities. You can't kick me out where I own the four walls that I can't live in now, right? District attorney, I don't know if you know this, Dudley. But I have a PTSD that came back, sh shot off all these really bad emotions in me and now I'm, I'm taking it out on my family and saying you guys must remember what happened back in the 70s with this abusive family and they're all not liking it right but they they just want me to just run away from this thing and i can't i was there first everyone loved me up until then i was being very respectful i'm a musician 
and the person before was a musician upstairs and then these new people moved in they had all this money it appeared they made one of the lexuses disappear after i mention it and then i spent a day and night in jail over the incident i come back the lexus is gone it's a different story i wasn't even caring anymore i was just <laughs> i wasn't trying to get him in trouble i think that's what they thought the lady insisted that it wasn't that bad and she wouldn't let me explain well no but it wouldn't have been that bad but not only did you take off the carpet and the foam and there's this charcoal for the smells and then there's this other piece of thing i'm explaining the whole what they've done and then now you're right on the beams and now those beams go right to my ceiling and my ceiling is right on this fan um it's a tube it's a oh my god it's a tunnel it's what uh it's what uh, wild man fisher loves to do his recordings in these tunnels yeah uh, he has a really bad voice he he had mental issues he was bipolar like myself like kurt cobain like lee mcmillan dudley district attorney dudley lee mcmillan was a vlogger she was stuck in Santa Barbara for six months because, uh, you know, COVID. She got depressed. I say it's from the environment, like me. She said in her videos. It, and that just cut off, you see? And that's, it was one of my family. Close. They're, they know, I said, I'm going to be doing a recording for this next hour, please don't call. It cuts into the flow. It cuts the tape recorder off. I have to restart everything. I'm telling you, that's my trigger. They are triggering me with illogical things. That's it. It's the illogical. And that's what pisses me off about the cops. doesn't matter what happened. It's what pisses me off about the uh, neighbors and, and whoever's connected back to me. When they all say these illogical things, they don't like the way I'm talking, but no one's ever heard me talk like this except the people, the, the, the lowering subscribers. Do you know since I started these things with just talking about since I've been triggered by my family, um, every, I've just, the subscribers just plummeted. It's proof positive they're not good for me. We were almost at 169. We were at 168. I was smiling in that video. I was saying, I'm really happy. No matter what happens now, I feel like there was some justice. I don't feel guilty, so I must be doing something right these good things were happening so i'm like oh it's helping other people i've never been able to do that really you know because with students since they're fighting you all the time i'm talking about being a music teacher or, or just trying to teach someone to drive when they fight you the whole time um and they don't see that you don't talk the, the way that a real instructor is going to teach you or like your father or friend would teach you yeah, they just, they don't accept it. And whenever you don't accept it, it's as though you've just run into a, it's like you, you're in a, a strange country, the car broke down, you do know as a mechanic how to fix it, but you need to be told what to do. And there's someone who really knows how to do it, but they can't do the mechanical parts because they have no arms. Are you seeing this? Now they're speaking... Arabic and you just decide well because I don't understand Arabic this is never going to happen yeah it's never going to happen but if you just let him pantomime like my grandfather would pantomime on on Milpas Street to some Latino what was wrong with his Impala and they were wondering what the hell is this grandfather doing with this piece of ass car yeah they used to run down the street sometimes we we'd be my dad my grandfather would be going just so slow he would do this thing he'd just cruise which now it's considered you know you you get a fine for that or or i think you get taken to jail if you're on sunset i mean not since um covid but sunset in la there's signs saying no cruising allowed no cruising they got cameras yeah they can film you we can't film them it's weird Second Amendment. Yeah, we're coming back to the Second Amendment. 
yeah, don't shoot at those cameras, people. I know I said to do that just to show them what the Second Amendment is, and we say we don't have that freedom in California. Oh, really? Yeah, so those are kind of confusing things. I did that on my channel. There were more subscribers. But, right, everything got shot down in this past week. And all of a sudden, from 169, we're like at 153. Isn't that amazing? And it's just these things. It's just me talking directly to them. If they listen to them and listen in the right way, they could totally get it and we could communicate afterwards. But instead, they're just turning it off because it sounds like yelling. And Mary Mandolin, if you're, if you're back, remember, you did that. You said, are you mad at the students? And I was like, yeah, they killed the doctor. I don't see, see that anyone thought that it was important, be it that that doctor was a real character or not. He was awesome, that doctor. Remember all the fun, funny, weird things where people were saying, are you on meth? Get back on your meds. Da, da, da. This makes no sense. And it would. It would make actual sense. Bringing me back to finish how the experiment started. So I hung up on my mom being totally irrational, making me triggered. And I said, now I want to explain the feelings that I'm feeling and send it to my sister so she would know the, what I was going through. And so I did like this monologue. It's a um, improv exercise it has a certain rhythm i got to this one part i really love the rhythm it's the only part that i can remember it it, it talks about me being bipolar and the ansd in the beginning and i'm rhyming it with the adhd and doing this kind of thing just messing with the language and and then i get to my um doing the first day of the first week of the first show this you know this censored show of the snl like i was there but as a musician right but i didn't last very long because they stuck me on this acting marking part or something i got in a fight with lauren because i was saying dude if if you have me saying live from new york it's saturday night all my friends like in la you're dead you're dead to them and he walked off already going whoa let's fire that guy but he didn't want to talk to his key grip i forgot what his deal was they're walking away so i'm standing and on this marking part it's just where you're supposed to they want you to stand and i'm doing this part for some guy who's who's going to be like an announcer or something famous announcer and i'm going but i'm i'm the musician can you just let me go over and like where do they smoke joints here just show me that part the key grip should know but anyways the key trigger, just to tell you, key grips in SNL, at least they got the product for Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. That's right. That's my conspiracy theory. I'm a news company. We call ourselves conspiracy theories. That way you cannot bust us in any way. If I use your name, I'm just going to be saying Nina. It could be anybody. I'm, I'm, I've changed. I've altered like the Gettys did their movie i've altered everything for cinematic effect that's right cinematic effect and you'll be staring at like what and i'm like yeah we're really low budget right you're listening it's a radio i'm doing a radio program so for cinematic effect i've gotten around a rule are you understanding me now there's a rule they say in the yt community oh especially the creative one that you can't use certain words or you got to bleep them you definitely can't write certain words in the description box. And you definitely cannot do certain inappropriate things that this machine can pick up on, all right? And it is good. Believe me, we have tested it. It is very good, especially in 4K, people. Yeah, if you're trying to get away with even just a word, someone saying it, making a gesture toward their nose, um... Yeah, hate crime, whatever. It says hate crime behind them. You can, yeah, it'll be banned, especially in 4K. So the trick we learned already was to lower it to 720p, people. It's really nice. Don't, you don't need to go higher, believe me. For YouTube, yeah, it, 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 the 4K doesn't even look good on YouTube. Yeah, forget it. Okay, that's just technical for the uh, key grips. 
Uh, they also said someone's not funny this year. Or what did that key grip say? It was Adam Sandler. Yeah. Yeah. Look who later SNL said is what you gave him a golden Grammy or something. SNL. You did not applaud when uh, Andy Ka- Kaufman's name came up. And it wasn't because the people in the hall were being respectful. It was because they did not know who the man was. SNL. Who was the man on the first show? The banned one. The the censored one. The one that never passed. The one we're looking for. Like the Larry David, his 13 words that he thought was appropriate in television. Right? And it was called Seinfeld 20 Minutes of Banned Words. Where is it? We want to see it. It would save this story. You saw the family got involved. The mama, like tradition, is not going to find that video, even though the nephews, the nephews could be American Spy Fox, but it could be, uh, you know who you guys are, Ari. Yeah, I'm doxing you. Ari, who's traveling, you are in midair right now, standing on your head, complaining about those knees. I know, dude. And... Did you know what drugs they were having you take? Yeah, I got a lawyer. Don't worry. We'll put you on the list. Okay, next. Itai. Itai, I'm doxing you too. You are in New York. I got a friend, Joe Kaiser, YouTube. I'm doxing you, dude. They now know. They already knew. I told you this two years ago. They know where you are in New Jersey. You're on your way to Los Angeles. They're following you. No, they're not following you. The P.I. Yeah, Thomas Grant, Private Eye, from Lumpo. The one who did, killed one of the Kurt Cobain, Christian Pfaff documentary film that they were in. That one. That we get the death threats, but it's called Death Wish. Yeah. Truth is, on our conspiracy theory, just so the news channels of TMZ do not get upset with us. Yeah, we we're learning a lot of this from Christopher Lloyd, who took cello lessons with one of our ambassadors to the team of the Music and Arts Conservatory of Santa Barbara. Look it up. We are a place. Then you'll know which family I am yelling at and why. They're going down unless they change the name of their school or the name of their policies with their mascot. I am no longer a teacher. I lost my tenure there of 30 years. 33 years, all right, 33 years of tenure with this family, of this. They loved me while I was there until I started talking. Yeah, I started talking during one of the classes, got into a big old argument with some girl wearing Uggs. And I said, my mama was wearing those Uggs during the COVID times. It was a thing like that. I already knew about the COVID. I explained to him, you know, they're going to tell you to wash your hands, but let me walk. I'm going to show you a band um sesame street yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i did i did it i mean it's the last time i did it but it's like mr someone it's it's he's a friendly old man he's next to the grouch right mr trash now the grouch trashy he's like me he he likes his trash he goes i love trash he likes trash music he gets in that trash i have it all around my bed he was in the actual trash can that was in my bed kind of in my head because you know at that age when i was watching this originally i was probably like nine years old and so i learned the lesson about washing my hands in hot water no matter what and if i was working somewhere that i should separate the lettuce Ooh, keep it cold, they said. Uh, But wash it. And the meat, like poultry. Ooh, vegans. Yeah. But still, you want for the other people. You don't want them to die, right? So this is how they trained us. So even if I had, like, some guy behind me in McDonald's saying, I am training you today, like I saw... And the guy just handed me this poor trainee who was rethinking his whole life plan, saying, I wish my mama hadn't talked me into this job. He's handing me this coffee, and the guy behind says, hand him the coffee. Oh, it was so embarrassing for all of us. I just, I, 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 I looked at him, I was just saying, I'm sorry, dude. I take the coffee, right? 
And, and the other guy behind him, just serious as ever, right? He knows me. He could have said, hi, hey, you know, this is Santa Barbara. We don't really have to go that pro. But he's, you know, he's training. You know, I can fire and hire. He's got this other thing. He's, he's doing orders. He's also cleaning this higher up, right? And the higher up on, on his side glance goes, say thank you. The guy says, thank you. Say, have a nice day. And the guy's like looking at me just like, oh, I hate this. And I was yelling, you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Please don't say it. And I was about to drive away and he's like, have a nice day. So I screeched the hell out of there. I made so much noise. And then I made a donut right in front, like over and over and over. So Santa Barbara Police Department, Sheriff's Department, deputies. Who shot the sheriff? Um, find me. I got, my tires are messed up. I told you they're summer tires, so. How did I do it? It's a super small car. It's one of yours. It's a 2018, oh, that's right, Ford Focus ST. That's right, with the little lights inside. It's yours. I got the number here. Let me look. Well, what am I driving around as? 2467. Yeah. Oh, district attorney. Dudley, I have now given them my numbers. I am 2467. I work for you. And I've been working for you since, oh my God, since the 80s. So you're going to have to look it up. As long as I've been living in that county facility and owning it. Whoever was there when they came in and said, you do not belong here. And I told these officers from Lompoc and Santa Maria. And I don't know who the other ones were. They were all laughing at me. I was naked, right? They couldn't quite search me because I told them I was in transition, but they told me they're not able to look neither that I was, you know, own the place for that many years, but they couldn't um, look down. So I had fun with them, you know, because there was, was a go boy, go boy. Every time it was a guy searching me, I went, whoa, I'm a them, I'm a they, gender studies. Remember, I told you I'm a professor of gender studies at the Music and Arts Conservatory of Santa Barbara for the past 30 years. And he said, musician like that is an op occupation. What does that mean? A music teacher isn't an occupation. The Music and Arts Conservatory, is it the arts aren't an occupation? Second Amendment, dude, press, freedom of the press, writing for the press, that's an art form. That's not an occupation. It didn't matter. You didn't believe that I was telling you the truth, even though there were all those instruments and, you know, diplomas on the wall, whatever. You threw me in the back. You messed up my hand once, just messing with, you know, because I wouldn't comply. And then you threw me in the back with the, in a canine unit. It wouldn't have mattered if I was a surgeon. It was done. When you threw me down like that, and that was a girl... And you search me again after you dressed me. You dress me. You take me in front of everyone. You, all these neighbors, like, looking now, right? Luckily, you saw the kids. You're like, oh, my God, I'm glad we didn't take them out naked. We would have turned them into a sex offender. That would have not been funny for us, I think. I hope. I don't think so. Because she kept kicking at my bare feet to make me spread my legs over this car when I'm like you know I have nothing look how tight the pants are oh my god it, it was so weird I have no shirt I have no shoes so she's kicking at the side like right you know there's a bone they told me in the in the cell in the holy cell afterwards it's a thing they were like oh you got the Saturday night surprise or something I forgot what it was it doesn't show afterwards I couldn't walk for a week yeah it doesn't show amazing that's that's nazi stuff district attorney they i know but they were connected that day it was a labor day you'll have to look it up all the good cops were home every cop i dealt with they were from somewhere else inside the actual jail if there's security footage you're gonna see it's like they're monkeys they took over they knew nobody was there it was at a time where the computers in the cars that was new. They didn't know how to do it. So I don't know what you have with me. The guy tortures me. You know, it's a five minute drive from the place. He parks in front and he tortures me and lectures me with the other girl 
like off doing something else and she's calling through his radio and they were flirting the whole time like in my house when it's obvious in that house that wow that person wasn't doing well huh that's what it's all about they do not know how to deal with mental issues in Lompoc either Santa Maria either I saw that there are just owners of McDonald's owners of Shell's managers of fuel depots managers of CVS's brothers of the managers of the CVS's actual citizens in the street taking over for the Shell people oh my god while grocery outlet um, detectives their security just yell flip old ladies off flip me off it really got into my bipolar all of this stuff and this Lee McMillan that no one seems to want to look her up either that she died on the train tracks right in front of that shell if she walked straight she would go down into a spot where there's dealers and there's nomads and that would be the spot she'd want to go after having an altercation with someone inside of your shop there the point market Jeremy anyone who worked there during the the experiment especially that last one the last one who just turned me away when he didn't know the story he just said that and a lot of people say that they don't want to know uh, everyone said that but I had to get out and I told them hey I, I have this high blood pressure I need that particular I just need four of them I got enough money here I'll just leave it on the counter and get out of uh, your way never come back and he said, no, that's not the way to deal with someone who has at least my mental illness. And it, that was a health thing. You know what I mean? It's not going to help that headache if I don't have that aspirin that was going to allow, you know, to bring the blood pressure down. And he just turned his back and he was, he was mopping. I mean, it's all looked dirty to me, you know, that kind of mopping, but he's doing it. Maybe he's on film. Maybe you look at it and go, it's good. He did his job. He kicked out the homeless dude who was bothering me about the syringes that he found the other time and that, that we were just COVID unfriendly into the, into the COVID. And, and all these things that were wrong with the bathroom, he'd say, well, that's Shell's problem. And then I'd say, well, inside where you do have hot water, but you're not allowing the customers or your employees use this hot water, by the way, did you know that you were always doing the coffee like out of protocol, just like restaurateur type? There wasn't that badge. There's no way. I was finding pieces of stuff inside of it. I would tell the person, look, I, can, I know you're wearing a glove, but you just logically, you just clean the counter with that thing. Now you're picking up the lid. You're pushing in. The lid had a thing uh, you had to push your finger through. All the... Um, sugar and things that we used to be able to serve ourselves now you guys are opening for us with these gloves with just it might be product but it tastes like you know it's ammonia or whatever i don't want to be drinking i mean i know your water is already bad that the coffee's going through i don't want you to add on to it and and you know creamer is not good for me and uh, sugar is not good for anyone really yeah so the only good things you had there that were, were, were regulatory were visiting when it was local companies making these really cool empanadas that you just, you know, how could you ruin those? Except sometimes people would just let them leave one too long, like classic 7-Eleven attire. Or, you know, it's like leaving the hot dogs out when it's just not necessary. And then they won't do it because they'll be like, well, no one's going to eat it. Yeah. Yeah, I would explain things like that and then they'd kick me out. And then the one person who, who was a good employee and it was Abraham and you said Abraham is not a good employee and like I said, he was probably a dick to you but he's now working with, with kids um, with mental issues in Los Angeles like in a really bad neighborhood. He was so cool to me. He showed me how to use... I could have worked for them. I could have worked for you, Jeremy. I would have done it better. 
he showed me how to get the coffee to be delicious, perfect. But but he let me complain. I complained because I was a barista and I was like, how come they're not doing this? Why is it doing this? Machine's not working, right? And he'd say, no, you got to push here and see it steams. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. I'll tell that to the other people. The minute I said it to another employee, these girls who ganged up on me, they like they used to like me. We'd talk about the cat and stuff. All of a sudden, because I knew how to do this hot thing that I'm like, you should just push this hot button. They're like, who showed you that? He wasn't supposed to show you that. Uh, we're not supposed to touch that. You know, not learn how to be a barista, no. It would have been better when the COVID had arrived. Yeah, it would have been, you would have been so ready for it. But no, instead, yeah, you would have kicked Starbucks' ass across the street. But no, instead, you did it your way. Yeah, now you're both suffering. Um, but they wouldn't even get it that they should just learn the thing. Instead, they contacted you or someone. They turned it into a big deal. He comes out. Abraham said, what did you say? And I said, all I said was that they should do it this way. And he was like, oh, no, please go. And I had to go do something I didn't want to do. I went and apologized to them where they were yelling at me, bringing up my family. Yeah, that's a trigger that my mom in a letter says, you cannot be yelling at me anymore. I'm not yelling. You guys are listening, so I have to yell at one point. You trigger the yelling because I, then I'm screaming and then I'm swearing. And that means I've gone way over the top. That doesn't mean that you guys have learned something. And that's what I was trying to tell this Kent and Nina with her phone. Because if it's going to crackle on the other end and you guys going, what? I can't hear you. And then I'm yelling. And then you tell me, I can't have you yell at me. It triggers me. Then you got to fix your phone, period, Nina. And your Texas, you cannot text me until you've heard like this recording all the way to the end. If you couldn't take it, you're going to have to listen to it for as long as it takes for you to learn the piece so that you can repeat it to me. Once you get there, then text, then call me. But I can't keep doing this thing where I keep saying these things at these meetings. You keep forgetting weeks later. Now you're telling me I can't bring them up. Now I have to censor myself. No way. I did that all my life. It didn't work. Can't you see that? Do the opposite of anything you were going to say. Find that show. If you watch the Seinfeld show, the one where George does the opposite, I would think it's called The Opposite Show. It's not the reverse show, because that's a thing where they do everything in reverse. No, the opposite show has to do with George just doing the opposite right there, right then. It has to do with food. It's funny, but he starts to apply it in everything. And suddenly the day that was going from, I'm such a loser, nothing in my life is right. He keeps repeating the same things. He says, I won't repeat the same thing. I won't eat the same thing. But the fun of the game is, he doesn't say no to the game. It's fun to figure out what is the opposite of a tuna fish sandwich. It's really fun. And then eat the thing that you just invented. It's awesome. And your life changes because you're going to have to move from that diner. You're going to be like, well, that diner is not going to make that sandwich. Where could I find it? Maybe I'll have to make it at home. Suddenly, you'll go to Gelson's. You'll be like, ah, it's not as fun anymore because my husband's not here. It goes there. Maybe we need to go to France where we would be hand in hand. Where when, when my brother says, please just sit quietly and just listen to me hand in hand. And, and this sister replies back in this way where I, that's the way I read it. That's the way it's gonna be on my phone forever. That's the way it triggers me in my mind. It, it, it says the complete opposite. Do you think, like, but opposite the wrong way. Do you think that we're just sitting around, holding hands, not caring about you? It had nothing to do with that. And you wrote it and you can't take it back. Unless, I, I don't know yet. Can you delete those, Nina? Because if you can delete your own, I don't know how to delete mine. If, if you can delete your own messages to me, that would be awesome. And leave up the ones that are good. I've seen the ones where you correct yourself. You write it. It goes up for a second. I go, yeah, please. Do you want to do that? It disappears. And then you write something else. And usually by the third time, it's good. But I think you should just stop typing and just sit and go for that third thought, which is probably the opposite of what you were planning to do. 
There it is, Nina. You try the game. I know you yelled at me at Stella Marie's and said, I do not want to play your game, Misha. Life is not a game. I'm not going to play your game. You said it, Nina. And you won the game. Do you see how wrong you were? You said it way back then. In the game, you actually said PTSD. Nobody had gotten it. They were saying I was on meds. They were saying I was off my meds. They were saying I was on meth. They were saying I was on heroin. They were saying I was on acid. They were saying on, I was on mushrooms. They were saying I was on coke. I mean, I can, the list goes on. Cristal is the latest. Smoking fentanyl is pretty nice. But everyone turns out weird of all of those drugs. You haven't tried them all. I have. I got one up on you. As, as press, I mean, if Santa Barbara Independent wants to know if uh, an ex-Bodnar had problems with bipolar environmental and what kind of drug and depressions were brought upon him by the, by the city of Santa Barbara, you see? Yes, of course it's public, Nina. We need to help someone. That's why I, I gave it, I sent it to you subliminally by just saying the Karen Carpenter story, you'll never see it. It's like they did it with um, Barbie dolls. They made that story with Barbie dolls because nobody wanted to tell that truth. It is disturbing, but we played it again, right? DJ Palladino played it once, and Bella Lugosi and I, we added a, a soundtrack because the it's a very bad sound quality. It's horrific. It's the truth. The brother feels really guilty about enabling this eating disorder into his sister and this carpenter dies, right? And the brother can't live with the guilt. And it doesn't matter if it didn't end up the way that anyone thought. It is that that particular moment in the brother's mind is forever molded. And so he had to make sure that this video was banned because he could not stand the sight of this truth. Now, if you can't see it, that's one thing. I got you. If it gets banned and you wanted to see it and know the truth, that's a different story. And that's what I'm talking about, these banned, the banned Seinfeld. It should mean something to you. This ba banned movie that I saw in 1981 called American Interdite, and it, it's starring Shell, it's starring McDonald's, it's starring vegans. It, you would not live here right now. You would be up and gone. And it happened in 81. So had you seen it in 81, you'd be living somewhere, somewhere else, having a very nice life. So I want you to be able to see it, right? I don't want to be blacklisted like all those other companies blacklisting me because I point illegal things out and, and they actually affected me personally to the point where, whoa, I can now help other people. If you're going to turn us into these ANSD bipolar, we are not monsters, but you're just going to force your screaming and then say that we're yelling. When you triggered us, say we're triggering you. You must remember all of you. This goes to anyone who's in the room, anyone who'll be listening after the viral video. I'm telling this to you. If you weren't in the person's shoes, you don't know what's going on. If you haven't heard that tape, if you haven't seen that 20 minutes, if you, like Mama, just refused to find it, even though it's super easy, had she just telephoned the nephews and said, do you know what your crazy uncle is talking about, about this Seinfeld doing the opposite show? Can you get it for me? Is, is there something on Prime? Can you, how long will it take? Here's my credit card number. You know, instead of doing that and making it impossible because she's never going to use Hulu, right? Let's just get out of there. They would just explain it. They'd just say, well, Lana, what was the first thing you were going to do when when you were about to speak after you cut um, Misha off? And you go, well, I was going to tell him that he didn't know what I, I, I went through. And then I was going to say he was, you know, did something. He, 
he he didn't make it clear. That's that's what I was gonna say. I I, I was I was gonna tell him, I'm really confused. My heart, pl- I need to go take a a high blood pressure pill. I, I know you've asked me to not throw guilt that way, and it's not necessary. Just go take the pill, but I'm I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna still say to you, all right. I'm cutting you off. I had to cut you off because I have to walk over and get this this high blood pressure pill that you're kind of giving me, you know, because I haven't heard yet what you have to say. But I already know where it's going. I know what you're thinking. You're not forgiving. Let me apologize one more time. I apologize. It was my fault. I wasn't a good mother. Now, can we listen to me? Your sister loves you and I love you. Can you talk to someone? Maybe you should go somewhere. Yeah, it just goes that direction. That means I'm going towards your program. Where would you like me to go? No, take care of the PTSD. That you figured it out, Nina, that it's PTSD that I got from these neighbors and it's none of this other stuff. Why don't you, instead of being like, I'm being a mean bipolar, Show me what a nice one is. Play a Kurt Cobain song all the way through. Learn the words. Play a Kristen Pfaff song. Find, find out that she's a prodigy cellist like me. Find out who she is. It's spelled P-F-A-F-F. Pronounced F. But one of the Fs is silent. It's all true. I don't, you know what I mean? But you don't have time for it. But I just ask you to just lie back and have time for it. Like we're lazing on some island. You guys got nothing. Your phone doesn't work. I'm not even there. You're like, I wonder what he was like. I see a piece of his cello floating up there. We could put burn it. I wish he had survived, you know, the helicopter crash. He, he was driving. He was laughing manically, though, wasn't he? Yeah, on the way down, we were. Ken was yelling. He pulled off his earpieces, going, "Why you? Why you? That's not called hovering. Why you're showing off, buddy?" And then, oh, we're in the afterlife. Yeah, no, you survived. You're in hell. He's in the afterlife. Do you want to remember what he said? I don't know. He did a lot of yelling. He was, being, he was in his mean bipolar. He didn't want to go to take care of his PTSD, even though he said, just have him put the floors back the way they were, legally. Just can they just put it back up to code? That's the answer. They set off my PTSD. I understand. I've done 2,000 of these videos and audios. It's all documented. I got a doctor. I got a lawyer. You guys seem to know right up to my, my Saint Alex, who's like, yeah, I changed him from being Greek Orthodox to Catholic in one conversation. No, I made him Christian. Now that's hate. That was a hate crime. And you know why? Because he was just going to let him get away with it. He was just saying, no, if you clean it all up, da 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 da, you. You don't have to be there. Like, just don't tell them. Just don't tell the next people. Do you understand the thing? Like, escape. Just get out. And But it'll always be in my head, like John Horton is in my head. That creaking, maybe the next people won't mind. But I, if if they're like me, it's unlivable. And we're the 1%. That makes me... One percent. Did you listen to that one, family? Did you listen to Jane's Addiction? You don't like the name, I know. You think it's going to be aggressive. You think it's going to talk about addiction. No. It's going to talk about that we're the one percent. And Jane says, yeah, I'm smoking some Mary Jane. She says, what does he say? It's, it's Ooh, baby. Dum, dum, dum. I'm so tired. Ba-da-dum, ba-da-dum, dum, dum. Ba-da-dum. The man from the government, the man 
from the tax board, the man from the public school, the man holds the golden rules and we are slave, you made me your slave. And this, you know it, family bonar to be true. And the government, and the tax board, and, and the school, man, did, uh, keeping asking me where do I live. I live out of my car now, school. Where's my daughter? Xanthi, where is she? she? She used to live with me. She was my shield. That's what it means in Greek. Alex told me. It's, it's, they hold your shield in battle. Xanthi, it's that character. She takes the hit before me. So when I spoke to that upstairs neighbors at the time when it gets down where I'm going to be thrown in jail and I'm in a public spot, it's a public spot right in front and they were filming me and I said point blank to them, you don't care. You said, you're saying it's not that bad. Where do you think my daughter is? She hasn't been here for two weeks. And they're like, nah, it's not that bad. And I said, what's her name? I pulled Breaking Bad. I said, tell me, what's my daughter's name? What's her name? It's Greek. Alex, right here. He knows. But you, neighbors that have been here for two years, making my life insane, what's her name? And he lowered his camera, his phone, and he, he said it to, you know, finally landscape mode i had been telling him come on if you're gonna do this do it right now he's filming me in front of my door he had followed me but that stopped him in his tracks i guess that he's right in front of my door now and i turned and i looked at him and i said keep filming it's showing that you don't care what's the name of my daughter and this is what he said upon to me he said come on I know the name of your daughter. It doesn't matter. 